So small projects don't necessarily mean small impact at all. It means a giant impact in the right space. To me, this is just as cool as any swim pond. And I guarantee the reaction from those people is gonna be the same whether they spent $200,000 or $10,000. Wait, do you guys see the reaction? You guys ready? We're ready. Oh my gosh. It doesn't Holy even look cow. the same. My yard what? doesn't even look the same. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. What a gift. Oh <laughs> what a gift. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. Oh. Success. It's, it's fantastic. Oh my god. Yes. You come here too. <laughs> wow. Wow. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. It's one of the coolest things about destination boulders. Not only are they changing the shape of the top water on the pond, but they're also a great place to encourage interactivity. This boulder just screams, come stand on me. Come sit my butt down, hang my feet in the water. The fish can come right up to the edge and it's really changing the shape of the pond also as we go. Looks incredible. Great job. I'm McCoy. Hey, Brian. <laughs> I don't know if you guys What are you thinking? Well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so we're building our waterfalls and I think our waterfalls are our signature on every pond, right? And it's really like kind of your fingerprint signature, whatever you wanted to call it. And here I'm trying to do something more creative. I'm also trying to keep in mind what size pump we're using. So we're using a 3000 gallon per hour pump, which technically says I can build a waterfall about two feet wide. What I like to do is like choke it way down because then we get that thick, thick water coming over, which gives us a more pleasant gurgling, babbling brook type sound, which is really important when you're sitting right next to the pond. We don't want a high treble sound, we want a deep bass gurgle type sound. So what I'm hoping is gonna happen, and I'm going against everything we really teach people to do, normally we would take a rock like this, get it level so water comes off of it evenly. I'm actually pitching this rock slightly backwards, hoping that when we turn this on, I can get water to kind of crest up this rock just a little bit, and then pitching it slightly this way so it drops onto this guy before coming back into the pond. Now, to get it all to do that, I've got to take another rock and block off a section of this. So I've got another rock picked out over here. I'm not sure if it's gonna fit, but I'm hoping it's gonna slide in and fit right in here. And then off of that big one, maybe I can get another big one back in there. And I really want some of our bigger signature rocks back on that side of the pond because our viewing area is from over there, not from where you're at. That's gonna be cool. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. That fits nice. And then what I like is, like I'll be able to slide this over to here pretty easy. Then we'll dig this out. We'll get a nice big one. I don't know if you can see this, but this is kind of like our peninsula on the pond. So we've got another couple big, big flat ones over there. And I've got enough liner to dig in a big one here before we get into our bird beach. I don't get excited all the time for what I do. Like it's about stuff like this, huh? <laughs> Still moving right along. Jack is now rinsing the pond. Pond is essentially done. We're just waiting on some small gravel for that beach area. We wanna get this thing full to make sure that all of our edges over along that beach area are good. Brian's over here currently working on the waterfall. I think it's important for the viewers to see kind of what you're going on in your cabeza up here. So I think I love what you're doing. You quickly explained it to me, but I thought this was gold that we're gonna, we need to get on camera. Yeah, so yeah. what do you think? So every waterfall, and some of you guys that have seen the channel before know how simple it is to actually build a waterfall if you just break it down to three rocks. Big rock on one side, that's called my frame rock, my spill stone in the middle, and then I'll get a big rock here. The idea of the big rock on either side is to channel that water to fall in between. The fewer rocks you can use, the more natural it's gonna look every time. I start piecing this together with a bunch of little stuff, it's gonna look man-made. So what happens is this rock is sloped this way, this little ledge is also sloped with it. So the thought is, is if I can get water to come all the way over into here, even if it comes from back this way, because this is pitched slightly that way, the heavier amount of the water is gonna fall right here. The rest of this 
this should fall in here, giving us, instead of just a big veil of water over the whole thing, water falling here and here separately. And I'll probably, you know, add a little chunk, like right where my hand is, to make sure that that really happens. But next, we've got this rock up in here. That's gonna slide in as my other frame rock. I do see that little notch on that rock. If I can play it into the waterfall, I will. If not, at least it gives the front of that rock some character. So you're not taking a very simple concept. What you're doing is you're taking what could be a very simple looking waterfall and making it much more interesting by getting the water to move a little bit differently by, by the way you're standing the rocks. I think what happens, Mr. Hansen, is, viewers <laughs> is if you can build the waterfall with just big rock on one side big rock on the other side simple flat rock in between and you can master that and really pay attention to what happens with the water then your mind starts saying i know and only through experience that if i pitch this rock a little bit this way this is what's going to happen on this rock take this big giant rock for example a lot of times people would do this entire pool with just gravel i wanted to make it look like it was more bedrock so instead of having boulder 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 and then a sea of gravel in the middle I put this big flat rock. I intentionally pitch this rock backwards. By doing that, I know I'll create more of a pool that this falls into. If this rock got flat, when this waterfall came over, it would hit the top of this rock and splash all over the place. So the thought is it'll look more interesting. And that's what's fun about building waterfalls. Like the reason I've been doing this for so long is because every day we get to recreate something different than we did the day before. Things are moving right along. We're after lunch. We would have liked to be a little further, but we're taking our time, making sure it's just perfect. I'm loving the shape of the pond. I'm loving the edge work of the pond. Chris is over here doing a couple edges. Chris, yes. talk to everybody like just the importance of some of those big rocks that we put in here. So the big rocks, what they really do is they add dimension to the pond, strengthening the overall design. It's not just one size boulder. You'll notice there's a lot of 12 to 18s or what we call 12 to 18 inch boulders, but we brought in these big pieces to really, A, accentuate the curves in the pond, but also they act as a statement and they draw your eye away from kind of the monotony of the all 12 to 18s, really breaking it up and strengthening the overall design, like I said. What's also nice about these is these big stones will also act as destination rocks. When you have a rock this size, next to one that's this size and this size, your natural reaction is gonna be the one to come landing here, not on these small ones off to the side. Again, going back to those destination boulders. Like we've got a big one here here here's a nice big one we got you know some big ones in there and then we'll do like little landslides in between all right pond is finished being filled it looks exquisite as Greg likes to say, the Christmas lights on the Christmas tree. It's the fine, it's the last 10% bringing in all these plants. So I see some asparagus ferns, I see some mondo grass, I see different sedums. We've got these little ferns that we've tucked in here and there. We've got our beach being kind of finished up over in this space. The whole area is just looking so good. Obviously, the reason we do these things is because of the response we get from our customers. And I can't wait to see what John and Rhonda think of their new backyard. It's so hard to imagine what that looked like, gosh, six hours ago. So we've all really come together. It just looks so good, right? It looks so good. And it fits the space. So small projects don't necessarily mean small impact at all. It means a giant impact in the right space. To me, this is just as cool as any swim pond, just as cool as any large, giant pondless waterfall. And I guarantee the reaction from those people is gonna be the same whether they spent $200,000 or $10,000. Wait, do you guys see the reaction? <laughs> huh? Not so bad. You guys, a couple hours. You 
you know it's a successful project when everybody that built it can't stop looking at it. <laughs> Once again, another awesome, awesome project. Hey guys, what do you think? Amazing. Great. Turned out great. I think what's so cool is we've worked with the Earthworks gang a number of times and we always crank out incredible projects and this is no exception. Sean, Nick, Tim, Jason, Jack over here, Brian, we had Joe on the other end recording for them. <laughs> um, it was a total cumulative team effort and uh, it's 5.30, right? Pond done in the day. Beer 30. Beer 30. We took some hot chocolate breaks, some apple fritter breaks. We decided to go a little bit more elaborate in that pool with you know big bedrock bottom and that kind of stuff. And He says we, but if he turns the camera around, you can hear by the laugh, you know where that decision came from. And it was totally worth it. We delivered on so many different levels. The destination boulders, the bird loving stream, the killer waterfalls, the shape of the pond. It really just totally takes this space to its fullest potential, as we always say. And it looks great from inside the house as well as out here on the patio. Awesome. You guys ready? We're ready. Oh my gosh. It doesn't Holy even look the same. My yard doesn't even look the same. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. This is amazing. What a gift. Oh <laughs> what a gift. Oh, oh my god. Oh. Success. It's, it's fantastic. Oh my god. Yes. You come here too. <laughs> wow. Wow. really tried to go after, and I say we, like everybody here, tried to go after way more of a bird-loving water feature with waterfalls. So you can see these like little gentle babbly brook areas over there. Jack and the rest of the guys worked on a little beach over in the back, but they can kind of come in and then wait till you see this thing. And it's probably in about another 30 minutes where we really get to enjoy what it looks like at night. Yeah. That's my favorite time for the pond. Uh -oh. This is wow. way beyond. Wow. Yeah, I wasn't imagining anything like this. Fantastic. It's beautiful. I love, I love it. it. I love it's it. It's fantastic. Oh my gosh. So come do this because this is my favorite spot. And then you need like a bell, right? Jack, 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 Wow. It doesn't look anything like it did before. <laughs> I love it. So tell me this, so seeing water features in the past mm -hmm. and now having your own, does it feel like it's way overdue? Is it more than you expected? Yeah, it's definitely way more than I expected. And yeah, you shouldn't wait this long. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone should do this. Right. At least. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't mean at least. Wow. No. no. <laughs> this is over the top. Oh look, you got a bird already. First bird. Yep. <laughs> They're like, oh, this is nice. A beach for me. Look at that. Oh yep. Look at that. <laughs> So can you see why this is our most popular kit? The Aquascape Ecosystem Paradise Pond Kit. It's because it can fit anywhere, right? That eight by 11 foot pond with a small little stream on it made such a huge impact in such a small, small area. I loved seeing the reaction on Rhonda and John's face. I love seeing John come down to that destination boulder. I love the way their daughters were saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe my parents actually own something like this. Rhonda has been wanting a pond for so, so so many years and now she finally has aquascape ecosystem paradise in her backyard this is why we do this it's so much fun to be creative it's even more fun to see families come together to see neighbors come together to see your workers come together to see everybody come together and do this hey i hope you guys feel as excited about that pond as i do if you don't have one you know where to get one call your local certified aquascape contractor get part of that paradise in your backyard you don't have to do giant swim ponds and 10 foot high waterfalls to have a vacation spot like that in your backyard. Hey guys, hope you like this video. Till next time, bye.
cat loves the new view. Like we said, we wanted it visible from that chair there. My shoes are a little muddy, so I don't want to walk over, but I can see the waterfall from either one of these doors. And so let's open this up, show you exactly what they get to see. Yeah.